You are a child of the stars, yeah, you are an orphan of fate. You are a child of the stars, you are an orphan of fate. You're well up in the chamber, you were born too late. This particular album had some great New York-based musicians in it, um, a drummer named Aaron Steele and a bass player named um, Michael League. And they're young guys and amazing players, very versatile, great touch, and uh, they lent a lot to the uh, song arrangements and just, I think, the overall feel of the album. The producer of the album is Yeston Paulson, who's worked a lot with David Gray. There's a lot of trust that's needed to flow between the artist and producer. And um, in, in this case, I felt really comfortable giving over a lot to Yeston creatively. In the past, I've tried to sort of micromanage recordings, and, and uh, in this instance, I, I wasn't interested in doing that. I wanted to try something different. And I'm really glad I did because it brought out a lot of things um, that I would not have brought out myself. Sometimes you need someone else to take your songs um, to another place. No, you're not buying it. But then what do you do? Like, you got the beat. Oh, you just sounded better up here. All right. We took about overall four months to record it, but the actual live recording took place over three days, and then we brought those tracks back to this studio actually to do um, overdub. But for this album, um, Yesta and I both agreed that we wanted um, there to be more of a, a, a raw live feel to it, to sort of bring more of my live performance into the recording. And so he was very adamant about ha having live takes, off the floor takes for this, which meant that we really had to do a lot of rehearsals so that we were all on the same page when it was time to go into the studio. So we spent about a month rehearsing the songs um, in great detail and coming up with arrangements that, that made sense and that fit the songs. It was quite a painstaking process, but once we did all that, we were able to take all that experience into the studio and, and really, um, I think we did 11 tracks in about three days. I think the way that that influences the record, it, it just, it brings a lot more um, honesty into it because um, when you're doing live off the floor takes, you're capturing that immediate moment of the take and the, the emotion and the energy of that and all of its um, flaws and warts and in some cases vulnerability. But I think what that gives is something that's sort of more exciting and that comes through when you listen to it, even if it's on a subconscious level, the ear picks up on it in a different way. And so uh, I'm very glad we did that um, as the sort of foundation for, for the tracks.
The songs were written from a, a very personal basis, you know, just doing a lot of touring um, on, by myself, solo touring, my last album. I had a lot of time on the road, countless hours to sort of think. <laughs> and uh, one of the ways I filled that time was just writing songs, you know, and just responding to the world around me and what, the lifestyle of touring. So, so this album is, you know, represents more of a, a growth for me, as every album does. Um, I think it, I, you know, I've, I've come to trust myself more and trust the creative process more and not try and get in its way um, and let whatever it is that's sort of honest and real about what you're doing come out and not try and choke it off. Davis for Fighters seemed like, um, it just came to me as a phrase actually that encompassed a lot of the feeling in this particular album. A lot of themes of struggle and, and overcoming that struggle and transformation ultimately. To become the man that you wanted me to be But I lean so hard that I thought I would so hard and it was my mistake so you don't know what you're asking me no you don't know what you're asking me is it harder than you thought Oh, wait.